So what is ChatGPT? ChatGPT, or Chat Generative Pre-trained Transformer, is a state-of-the-art natural language processing model developed by OpenAI. It was designed specifically for generating human-like text in a chatbot setting that has the ability to understand and respond to a wide range of topics and questions. How does ChatGPT work? ChatGPT is based on the GPT-3 model, which stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. It uses a type of artificial intelligence called deep learning to analyze and understand large amounts of text data. When ChatGPT is given a prompt or question, it uses the understanding of language to generate a response that is both relevant and human-like. The model is trained on a massive data set of human conversation, so it has a good understanding of how people communicate and what they are likely to say in a good situation. What can ChatGPT be used for? There are many potential uses for ChatGPT, including chatbots, customer service, and language translation. It can also be used to generate content for social media and websites and more. Overall, ChatGPT is a powerful tool for understanding and generating human-like text, and it has the power to revolutionize the way we communicate with computers. Here are a few examples of how ChatGPT could potentially be used by teachers. As a personal tutor, ChatGPT could be used to provide personalized tutoring sessions for students. For example, a student could ask for ChatGPT questions about a particular topic they are struggling with, and the model could provide explanations and examples in real time. As a grading assistant, ChatGPT could be used to grade assignments and provide feedback to students. For example, a teacher could input students' essay, and ChatGPT could provide comments on grammar, structure, and content. As a language learning tool, ChatGPT could be used to assist with language learning by providing conversation practice for students. For example, students could have the conversation with ChatGPT in the target language and the model could provide corrections and feedback. As a research assistant, ChatGPT could be used to help students conduct research by generating relevant information and sources on a particular topic. And as a content generator, ChatGPT could be used to generate lesson plans, quizzes, and other educational materials for teachers to use in their classrooms. Here are examples of how ChatGPT could potentially be used by students. As a study aid, ChatGPT could be used to provide explanations and examples for difficult concepts that students are trying to understand. As a language learning tool, ChatGPT could be used to assist with language learning by providing conversation practice for students. As a research assistant, ChatGPT could be used to help students conduct research by generating relevant information and sources on a particular topic. As a writing assistant, ChatGPT could be used to help students improve their writing skills by providing feedback on grammar, structure, and content. As a homework helper, ChatGPT could be used to solve math problems, provide definitions for difficult words, and answer other questions that students may have while completing their homework. There are a few dangers or issues to be aware of when using ChatGPT or other natural language processing models. Misinformation. ChatGPT is trained on a large data set of human conversation, which may include misinformation or biased perspectives. It's important to fact check any information generated by ChatGPT or any other AI model to ensure it is accurate and reliable. Dependence. If people become too reliant on ChatGPT or other AI models for tasks such as grading, tutoring, or research, they may lose valuable skills in these areas. It's important to use AI tools as a supplement rather than a replacement for human skills. Privacy concerns. ChatGPT and other AI models process a large amount of data to function, which raises concerns about data privacy and security. It's important to be aware of how data is being used and to take steps to protect it. Ethical concerns. The rise of ChatGPT and other AI models raises broader ethical questions about the role of technology in society. It's important to consider the potential impacts and consequences of using these tools. Now, every word that I have said before this sentence was actually generated by ChatGPT. I basically asked it a couple of questions and prompts, and it generated the script for my entire video that I started off with. So that shows you the power of what ChatGPT can do.
when you log on you will be told that it is a free research preview and obviously they try to get information and feedback from users that are using it and they do warn you that even though there are safeguards in place there is still the potential for bad information to come through or repeated or redundant information from what I've experienced. They also tell you how they collect your data so that at least you know where, what is happening with your data and they ask particularly for your feedback. Now at the moment it is currently free. You do not need to pay for it. However, it does cost a lot of money to run this type of technology on their servers. So I'm not sure how long that this will be for free, but there will be some aspect that they will monetize in order to, for it to be available in the future. As teachers and students, I recommend that we become aware of what the new AI chatbot technologies can do so that we can use them and train ourselves how to use them efficiently, but also ethically. There needs to be a big conversation about education and the way forward with how this technology affects the creation of content, particularly by students. So although the technology has its limitations, which you'll see on the front page, they mention over there that it can still generate incorrect information. It may be biased based on the conversations that it's analyzing. The data set of the information is before 2021. As with all technologies, it exponentially improves dramatically. These limitations will become far and few as time goes on. So I encourage teachers and students to try out the technology and find ways of how they can use it to supplement their teaching and learning. Let's try a couple of examples to see how it really works. So once you have logged on successfully and registered, you will come to a page that looks like this where you can start new chats with ChatGPT and you will put your prompt in over here. They do tell you all the examples and capabilities and limitations on the front page. So over here, we're going to start off with our first question. What is the difference between the way proteins and carbohydrates are digested in humans? Let's see what ChatGPT generates from this prompt. So as you can see, it creates the text real time and you can see the conversation happening. It tries to use everyday language so that it's much more conversational. And you can see a lot of those facts are coming through there. As a suggestion, I would double check that this information is correct, but obviously if there's a biology or life science teacher around, they can double check it. If you are not happy with that response, then you can generate a new response and you can also provide feedback on whether that answer is correct or not to help it analyze its results. I'm going to continue the conversation by adding another question about carbohydrates and proteins. I'm going to ask it, can it create a table with the differences between proteins and carbohydrates? and we'll actually create a table in HTML. So scroll down, we can see the table being generated there in real time. It picks the different properties and it's giving me some nice little data on it. So there we go. So we can try to regenerate that response if we don't like it and see what it comes up now. And you can see if that's if you're happy with the second table or not and so on. So you can see the power of this type of technology is generating tables of data. So students struggling to learn or str struggling with an exam paper question while they are revising, they could type it in here and see what the results could be to help them with their understanding or definitions. Now, it doesn't just answer questions. It actually generates content as well. So we're going to try another question over here. I'm going to ask it to generate a dialogue, an actual discussion between two people talking about which series on Netflix is the best. And there we go. We've got a dialogue with person one and person two with the text that they say. And they're talking about a particular series, like they're talking about Stranger Things. They're talking about a series called Dark. And there we go. We've got a basic little, basic little dialogue. And now you can give it further prompts. I'll continue the discussion with regard to who the actors are. Yeah, they continue with other shows, but as you can see, it's very powerful in what it's generating and with a quick dialogue. As an IT teacher, you can get ChatGPT to generate code. I'm going to ask it to create a quick sort in Delphi. Quick sort is a type of sorting algorithm. So let's have a look and see what it generates. It 
And there we go. It's actually generating the code. It allows you to copy this code so that you can paste it into your program. So it gives you a generic one. As a programmer, you will still need to know how to modify this code to your scenario, but it does give you the basic algorithm and information about how you should implement it. So it's giving me an explanation of the code as well with an example of how to use it. So this is very powerful for programming. Speaking of code, let's try HTML code. I'm going to ask it to give me an HTML code for a navigation structure. And it's generating the HTML code that you can use in a website. And explains it as well. And then it gives further CSS code, which is cascading style sheet code. So this code, this is quite powerful with, if you consider the implications of just generating quick code of what you need to use. A lot of the feedback from generating code is that it's quite basic code that it can generate. It struggles with more advanced stuff, but as it gets better, it will probably be able to generate better algorithms for the more advanced problems. Now I'm really going to test its capabilities. I'm going to ask it to generate a poem about a tiger during a drought. Let's see how creative ChatGPT can be. So there we go. It's generating. There is some rhyming mechanism that is being used. But there we go. We can see it's talking about a tiger and it's talking about how it's struggling to stay alive because obviously it's in a drought. So there we go. There we go. A little poem. If you don't like the poem, you can regenerate it. But this is a poem that was generated by ChatGPT. There are also cases where people are using ChatGPT as a form of therapy conversation. So you can actually have a conversation with ChatGPT. So I'm feeling unmotivated today. And let's see what its response is. And it's quite encouraging in giving back feedback giving me some tips, but also very conversational, like if you would be speaking to a real person. It's okay to take it easy on yourself. This is very encouraging. So I want to continue the conversation, but I have so much work to do. And it continues the encouragement with strategies as well of what I can do to help myself. Some people have even taken text and pasted in here and then they get ChatGPT to analyze the text from an essay or from a meeting to give the key points so that you can analyze the information. Now this wonderful technology is very useful. However, we need to be very careful about how we use it. And here's some of my advice about using AI chatbots and ChatGPT going forward. First of all, you need to make sure that you double check the information. You can't trust the information 100%. There are obviously going to be some errors in it. So whenever you create information that's particularly important for like an essay or, or that's going to be in a presentation, I would first confirm that information is correct. Use ChatGPT to generate the information quickly, but then double check that all facts are correct. Now, ChatGPT does not search the internet. It's purely based on the conversations and data that it's got in its data set. So it cannot provide sources. It's not going to different websites to find this information. So you can't ask for its sources. So if you need to reference information, you can use ChatGPT to generate the information. But when you are doing that double check in to see if that information is true, wherever you double check, it should be using as your sources. ChatGPT is also providing information based on what you give it. There is a concept of garbage in, garbage out. It will create content for you if you are giving good responses and good prompts. And if you are asking it for bad things, it will give you bad things. We often blame technology for feeding us negativity and strife. However, so social media and these AI technologies simply give us what we tend to feed it. So if you feed it positivity, if you feed it good information, if you feed it good prompts, it will give you good information. And we need to consider how we are using it ethically. There are still some ethics that need to be discussed about the use of this technology. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. So use it in a manner that is correct, that it doesn't violate the rules imposed, that it doesn't go against the requirements of what you are trying to do. 
So always ask yourself, if you're using ChatGPT to do a task, is this an ethical way to use this technology? And ChatGPT should supplement and add value to what already is there. You should not be relying solely on ChatGPT. If you are only using ChatGPT to create content that you can't create yourself, then you will be found out. It becomes very apparent. So if you're using this to help find your information quicker or to supplement it, then you are adding value to what is already there. So do not use this to pretend to be someone who you are not. And we should always be asking not just how we should be using it, but why are we using it? What is the reason for us using it? Is it adding value to our life? Is it adding convenience? This comes back to the ethical question of why am I doing this? Is it correct? So those are some aspects about ChatGPT I think you should be aware of as teachers and students. Go play around with it. It is a wonderful technology. I've never been excited and scared at the same time of a new technology. I think it's going to be a revolutionary way going forward of how we do things. So we need to learn quickly of how to use it well and how to use it correctly. And we'll see where the future of these chatbots take us. For more videos about the use of technology in the classroom for teachers, then make sure that you go to our Teacher Tips channel, click on the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you and give us feedback. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.